Hello there. Today I'm going to show you three very useful tricks for Affinity Software to speed up your workflow. They will work in all three programs, so Affinity Designer, Photo or Publisher. I'm going to use Designer today, so let's take a look. The first trick is to transform your objects, your shape separately. If you select a group of objects like I just did, and you, for example, try to rotate them, you may notice that the whole group rotate from the center. And in this case, maybe you just want to rotate them one by one. And some of you guys just start doing that, like go one by one. You don't have to do that. So select them all like before, and then change one little setting at the top. So we want to click on this button here, transform objects separately, turn this mode on. As you can see, it's now on, it's pressed, and you will notice that it seems like we got only one object selected, but that's not the case because every other object got this blue outline and I can see that they're all selected in my layer panel. So let's try to rotate this guy. As you can see, all of the objects that I have selected follow. And we can rotate them, we can even apply different transformations and they will transform one by one and not as a one big group. So that's really, really handy. So keep in mind, if you got objects to transform separately, you can still select them all at once and then turn on transform separately mode at the top while your transform tool, your selection tool is on. All right, what else can we do? Artboard color can be adjusted by just changing the artboard color itself. I see many of you drawing like rectangles and putting this as your artboard. Backdrop, right, moving this to the back of the artboard. All right, there are some benefits to this method, but if you simply need a different color of your artboard, you can select the artboard by clicking on the artboard name and then select the color. And that's it, you recolor the default artboard color. Actually, the artboard is just glorify shape. Keep in mind, you can switch off the artboard color completely. If you go to document setup, colors, this transparent backdrop option here, if you turn this on, you will kick out this default white color you got this transparency indicator, the checkerboard, and you can still put the color in the artboard, whatever you need. It's gonna be even white color or in any different color, but by default, there will be no color on your artboard. So that's gonna be helpful as well. My third little tip is to customize your tools. Right now I'm using uh, Apple MacBook Air. The screen is really small, so I cannot fit all of my tools in one column. As you can see now I've got two columns, I use some separators as well. It's nice and organized toolbar. So let's try to replicate this step. So I head to view and at the very bottom you can see customize tools. This will allow you to drag in and out some tools. So you've got like shapes that you use often. You don't need to open the big shape group. You can just drag them in. For example, use the heart shape all the time for some strange reason, put it here. You can see the hardship straight away without opening the bigger group, arrow shape. Anything you need, you can separate your style picker from the color picker. So you can put those tools separately. So you don't need this group anymore. And of course you can adjust how many columns you got. As I mentioned, if I put everything in one column, my screen is too small to fit all. So. In my case, I can use two columns. And I know some of you veterans, you prefer the two column layout as it always was a standard in the past. So keep in mind, you can modify your tools. You can always reset to default as well. If you are not happy with your results and take a look, that's what I'm saying. At the very bottom, in my case, I got those two little arrows showing me that are two tools not fit on this list. So if you really don't want this little arrow at the bottom, just customize your toolbar to be in two columns and that will solve the problem. I hope those three 
tricks can speed up your workflow. And if you are hungry for more tips and tricks to enhance your workflow in Affinity Designer, I got a good news. I finally finished my class where I highlight 17 different tricks and tips designed to speed up your workflow. And I have prepared a little practical exercise for each tip. Take a look. I got 18 artboards here and we practice each tip together, artboard by artboard until you learn them all. I strongly believe if you learn all of those tricks, it will enhance your speed in Affinity Designer. If you would like to learn more about those curated tips and tricks, I got two hour long class where I'm going to guide you through this whole workbook. We're going to use them together. I've been working on this for a while and I'm really proud of this class. It's maybe my best class yet. So don't forget to check the Udemy link that I will put at the bottom in the description, maybe in the comments as well, if you are interested in speeding up your workflow. Thank you for today and I will see you in my next tutorial. Bye.